If they announced a 15 city tour, they're not rolling through Denver. Really? Yeah. I but they're the, in Kansas City, so. I think the last time they appeared here was, oh, 10, 15 years ago, it seems to me, and they appeared up in Boulder at Folsom yeah. Field. Yeah. So I, I'm surprised they leave out Denver, particularly with the drug laws that we have here. <laughs> Would you think that? <laughs> They'll be in Kansas City, which isn't a bad drive. We can fly it or drive it if we want to see it badly enough. Right? But I, I know that Keith's got to be upset. Is he still alive? He looked like yes, he died he 10 years ago, yes, but he's he still is. on stage, yeah. Um, yeah, have you ever seen him in concert? He makes Rod Wood. I've actually met Rod Wood. Yeah. The, 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 who replaced, he replaced somebody who replaced uh, Brian Jones, who was uh, actually the leader of the band who died uh, uh, in a swimming pool accident. Drug, yeah, drug yeah. overdose. Yeah. Um, have you ever seen the Stones in, in concert? No, no, I haven't. I've seen a lot of their concerts on Netflix. <laughs> yeah, I'm not a big. I, I wasn't a big Stones fan growing up. I mean, I know all the songs, but I didn't go out and buy the albums or the CDs. But I did get to go when Barry Fay was alive. Huge concert promoter from the area and a, and a friend of uh, mine and Woody's. Um, he got he got me and a and a few other guys tickets sixth row at McNichols Arena, and it was just a kick. Not just watching them on stage. Because by then, they, they were in their 80s. I think they're in their hundreds now, aren't they, the Stones? By then, they were in their 80s. But watching the people around and how they were reacting. And it was a bunch of 50- and 60-year-old stoners in the audience who were getting off on the Stones. It was kind of cool. I, I loved them in college. And when we recently had a pick six about the greatest rock and roll band, I picked them number one. I think you didn't even put them on your list. But that, that is the greatest rock and roll band in in, in your history. opinion. And I wish that they, uh, no, that's not an opinion. Yeah, that in your opinion. Fact. Well, that is not a fact. fact. That it's is fact. fact. You can't state that as fact. <laughs> and I repeat again that what was funny about it, because they were the other band competing with the Beatles, and they were cast as the outlaw kind yeah. of gr group. And the, the Beatles, -Beatles. Were, the, were the dressed up in the suits and everything. And what people didn't know is the Beatles were actually the bad boys. And the Rolling Stones were nice guys. Mick Jagger went to art school. I mean, it was not like they were a motorcycle gang. Well, they weren't exactly angels. Not exactly angels. I mean, if you see any of the documentaries about them, there was plenty of drug use and plenty of other stuff going on. But, yeah, they were portrayed as, as the devilish ones, and the Beatles were portrayed as the angelic guys. Do you know what their first album was called? Um... Hit me. More calls. 12 by 5. Really? The number 12 by What did it signify? Five. 12 songs by five guys. Oh. Huh. That's boring. No, 12 by 5. It was a great... It, what was the one catchy. with the tongue? What was the name of that album? That was a poster. Licks. What was it? 40 Licks. 40 Licks? No. Yeah. That's not right. <laughs> 30 Licks. <laughs> <laughs> no, the one with the tongue. Come on. Yeah. You can unzip it even in the... Yeah. I think on the album cover. Anyway.